We are just under two hours away from sunrise in Leavenworth, Washington here this morning, a popular place for tourists to travel. If you want to see the northern lights right now, it's all quiet along the horizon, though. But this week, stargazers got quite a show here in Michigan. Katie Palmer shared this photo with us from her recent trip to the UP with her husband and daughter. They were chasing the Aurora Borealis when she spotted this fireball in the sky high above Lake Superior. They were getting settled in for the night of stargazing on the shoreline of Whitefish Bay. When it happened, she tells us it was bright enough to illuminate the entire shoreline with that blue green glow and it lasted just a few seconds. Yeah, snapping a photo like Katie did here is kind of the holy grail for stargazers. But when it comes to the Northern Lights phenomenon, like this photo here you see behind us, you know, it really does explain what these beautiful dancing waves really are. And it really is a lot of science that goes behind to what we see here. I don't really know what they are, to be honest. I don't really know what, what the Northern Lights actually are, how they well, get made. Well, let's talk a little science about that, shall we, let's here? Let's do it. All around the Earth, we've got the Earth spinning around out there in space. We take the Earth with the sun, and then we have that magnetic field that's also around the Earth, coming around in both directions. This magnetic field around Earth interacts with the solar winds coming off the sun and gives us those charged protons and electrons that are shifted away from the sun, heading toward the Earth. Now, when those protons and electrons head toward the Earth, they interact with these magnetic fields. Just imagine two big pools, one on each side of the Earth. And once these particles interact with that magnetic field, they find the weakest spot to enter the Earth that is normally at the North and South Pole. Now, once we start to get that interaction at the poles is when we start to see this. The electrons colliding with other molecules that are already present in the atmosphere. And then they start to see that shooting star effect from like what you saw in that picture. And then the resulting excitation, the fast movement of those molecules here causes the different colors that we see in the atmosphere, and it's all based on height from where those molecules hit. So the pink auroras are those below 100 kilometers. Those are nitrogen molecules. The green auroras, roughly 100 to 200 kilometers in the atmosphere. Those are oxygen molecules. The blue auroras, roughly 100 to 300 possibly molecules. Those are nitrogen molecules. And above 200 kilometers, the red auroras, those are all oxygen molecules. So a lot of science going into something that we see pictures of quite a bit up here in Michigan that makes the atmosphere so bright. Grant and Priya.